Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Time Out for, uh, with Tackle What's Next. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. We are talking to athletes and executives about how sport has made a difference and changed the course of their lives and how they tackled life after the game. I'm your host, Danielle Berman. I am the founder of Tackle What's Next, where we host uh, and help athletes create impact outside of the game and find their purpose in life after sports. So thanks for taking the time out with us. Before we bring our next guest on, I just want to give him a quick introduction. We are talking to Corey Camp tonight. Corey is a former swimmer. He swam for 18 years. He swam at the D1 level for University of Delaware, and he's now a performance coach and host of the Athletic Mindset podcast, where he and his fellow former athletes talk about winning the game of life, both physically and mentally. Through fitness, lifestyle choices, and more, Corey's figured out a system that works to optimize life, and he helps former athletes tap back into that athletic mindset and figure out how it can best serve them now in the real world. So his holistic approach and focus on that to show athletes how to be successful off the field and create that forever team really allows them to share their experiences. So I'm so excited to chat with Corey. I see he's here. I'm going to bring him right on screen and we'll get started. Hey, Danielle. Corey. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? How's it going? Good. I appreciate the introduction, and I'm excited to connect and share my story and see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I know you just moved, so you're in sunny LA, right? <laughs> it's sunny, but a little chilly, okay. um, for whatever it's worth. You know, it's uh, 50, high 55, 59 today, so... It's yeah, nice, hey, though. That's good. I'll take it. <laughs> I was going to say, it's snowing here in D.C., so I will take 59 and sunny. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't miss that weather. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, how have you been? How's the last few months been going? Um, tell us what's been, what you've been up to with the Athletic Mindset podcast and your work. Yeah, um, the last few months have been a blur. It's been a roller coaster, a lot of ups and downs, but all good things. As you just mentioned, transitioned very recently. Um, out to LA. I live now in Venice Beach uh, as of a week ago. This is my new residence and just enjoying it. It's been a heck of a ride. The group coaching has been kind of taking off, which has been great. The podcast, the Athletic Mindset podcast that I run has just kind of exploded in new ways that I never saw it doing. And it's been really exciting. So a lot more conversations and dialogues like this and seeing where it takes me. So here we are. I love it. That's awesome. How how have you pivoted or changed gears in the last few months? You know, you said that group coaching's taking off. Is that something new? Like, how did you adapt to virtual world? Yeah, I was about to say almost a year ago, which sounds really surreal saying it, right? But it's been about almost a year of this whole virtual space. I was an assistant fitness director at a country club in D.C., uh, well, Maryland, I guess, for those of us getting really granular. <laughs> and, and I was there and then the things shut down. And instead of being reactive of like, I'm going to just sit back and wait until mm -hmm. things get back to normal, as we kind of have seen how that's unfolded. Yeah. We're really not there yet. Uh, I took a proactive approach. And I was very fortunate in my role there that they actually had agreed to continue to pay me while things were closed for okay not just a few weeks, but a few months. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had this like financial backing when I really wasn't doing any work for them, uh, very minimal, that it allowed me the space and free time to really explore what did I really, what was I really passionate about? And I found that that really was bringing this mindset world, this mental health dialogue and conversation into something that's more accessible to everyone. And yeah. I really found like the former athlete niche is the niche that I really want to, to work in as you found, like it's super rewarding. Good people. to yeah. work with. Absolutely. How, how did you decide to start using that holistic approach? Um, how did you figure out, you know, how you wanted to do this, figure out the processes and the systems? Like how did that process come to be? Um, through my own journey. Uh, there was plenty of times I looked back at my own life where I was physically in great shape, but mentally wasn't in a good place. Mm -hmm. Or I like swimming, for example, and I think a lot of former athletes relate to this. When it ended for me, 
it was, I really found so much of my identity and value of who I was as a person was tied up in that sport. So going through my unpacking my own story and journey and looking at what helped me through it. It wasn't the gym, so to speak, post sport, post swim yeah. that really helped me. It was doing the emotional work and diving into that question of what is next? What is success? Who am I as a whole person, as a human, not just who am I as a swimmer? And it took a lot of reframing, but that's kind of how I ultimately decided holistic approach is the way to go, not just focusing on the physical or uh, the mental. Yeah, I think it's super important. And you brought up a great point about the identity and that it can be really easy to get wrapped up in your sport. And so, so talk to us about that journey that you explained, you know, when did you start swimming? Was that the first sport you picked up? Like, how did your identity become so wrapped into that? Tell, take us through your swimming journey. Yeah, um, hopefully we have time for it. No, I'll keep it <laughs> brief. It's, I started at four years old, um, nearly drowning, actually, at my local summer pool where my dad was a coach. Oh. He saved me, luckily, and I had no fear for the water. That lasted. I was in swim lessons the next week. Took mm. to it pretty naturally. Um, had a good feel for the water. And while I wasn't the most talented by any stretch, I just enjoyed my time there. I felt at peace and at home when I was at swim practice. I played a couple other sports, basketball, baseball, all the things growing up. And, but it was really like sixth grade where I decided, okay, I'm going all in on the swim thing. And the irony was I was better at some other sports at the time, like baseball, but I enjoyed swimming the most. So I just kind of listened to my heart and leaned into it. And, you know, I was very thankful for that, how, how that turned out. I ended up swimming at the University of Delaware, set a number of records there, a couple MVP seasons, won a few champion or a championship uh, my sophomore year in one of my events. It turned out really, really well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fun to take a trip down memory lane and look back at it. But yeah, when it's something that I poured my heart and soul into really from sixth grade to senior year of college, I mean, I was dedicating 20 plus hours a week to it. Right. And beyond that, everything I did was with that success in mind. It was, okay, I need to go to bed at X hour because I need to be up at this hour to go swim. Mm hmm I'm not going to eat this because it's going to impact my performance here. Right. Every decision beyond the 20 hours of actual training was with that in mind. So when that wasn't the case anymore, I was like, how do I make decisions? I, I don't know. There's nothing guiding me anymore. Yeah. No, it's, it's so, it's a great, great point to bring up. And I think a lot of athletes could relate to that of just like, what's the motivation, right? Why am I going to bed early? Why am I getting up early if I'm not, jumping in the pool or running on the field or yeah. in the weight room. Um, but I think that the key that you mentioned is like really taking that holistic approach and using the skill sets you have and, and using those, those kind of intangibles, right. That you can translate. So tell us about the skills you're using today. Like what did swimming and your other sports you played teach you about what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, definitely in the entrepreneurial game. Uh, patience is the number one thing that keeps coming up over and over again. Uh, and each time I just, when I find myself on the cusp of something, like I have to remind myself, like the way swimming is structured, I really had two shots a year to like show up and show out and go best time. Outside of that, there was like these little practice meets here and there. And the expectation wasn't like best performance of all time. It was just right. practice reps. So even with that, it was like, there was years where, quite literally years went by in between best times in my main events, but I stayed patient and there was a breakthrough around the corner. I just kind of stuck it out long-term. So that's really the number one thing that I find coming up time and time again, especially as I'm really early in this entrepreneurial journey. It's only been, it hasn't even been a full year since I've been all in full time on it. It's reminding myself, it's okay to be patient. Like it's going to take time. Uh, in fact, it's going to be even better because it's going to take time and I'll appreciate it more. Yeah, 100%. And I think there's a lot of similarities between the athlete kind of structure and skill set and, and the idea of working to the championship, right? Putting the time in, putting the time in every day, even though you might only play 
once a week or once a month or like you said a couple times a year competing right yeah. um, so I, I love that similarity and and talk to us about the work that you do so what is the athletic mindset kind of program and how do you work with other athletes like what do you guys do and then what's that experience like being able to support them yeah, absolutely. So the work that I mainly do is group coaching. It's actually called more than movement. Uh, it's taking the athletic mindset into the real world. So what that actually looks like is it's a 10 week course where we sit down once a week as a group. Why I wanted it in a group is because I'm huge on the team, really just the team feeling and that sense of you're not alone as you go through this journey. Uh, I think that's the biggest game changer um, mm -hmm. we can introduce in our life. So it's a, in a team setting. We have team meetings once a week. From there, we talk on anything from emotional support uh, strategies, mental health strategies, figuring out where we're at. And honestly, it's just a space to have open and vulnerable conversation and feel like you are met with other people that are like-minded around you. And they're just like, I get it. Me too. I'm also struggling with that. And I could just kind of serve as, in that capacity, a director of the dialogue of like, okay, let's focus on this. And I put in my advice when, we, when I can, but I'm learning from these people uh, that I work with each session as well. From there, I think what really separates my work from a lot of it out there is I take those strategies and those topics that came up and I get creative and find ways to intertwine that into a movement program, an actual physical workout plan. So it's taking these abstract ideas and putting them in physical terms so that it really resonates with the former athlete. We all understand how to move our body. I'm just showing you a different way to do it in a way that makes it less abstract, that soft skill, and actually shows you this is how it actually applies to right now. Yeah, I love that. And I think the biggest hurdle sometimes in figuring out what's next is navigating the real world, like you said, and just yeah. coming from that place of structure, that place of here's what you do every day. Like you said, I have to do this to get up, to get to practice, to do this, to do that. Um, the real world, there, there are no rules, right? You know, there, there's laws, but like you kind of run your own day and, and you have to decide when you're going to get up and when you're going to shoot those emails out. And it can be hard to figure that out. So I love the fact that you're giving them, showing them the toolkit they already have and just how to apply it in other ways. And I love the physical part too, because that can be something I think a lot of athletes might struggle with, like, how do I work out now that I'm not working out for a game or working out for practice or for training? Like, so I think it's a great piece to add to the puzzle. Um, so how has it been working with former athletes? What advice are you giving them that you might might apply to some of our network too? You know, how, how do you approach it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the reason why I include the physical, like we touched on very early on about the identity piece. I think if you are a former athlete, and if you made it to high school, if you made it to college, if you made it beyond, it doesn't matter. If athletics was a part of your life, the physical is going to be a part of your identity. Now, we have the option when it ends that it can look different. Like, we yeah. have to come to that realization. Like, I came to the realization that, like, I'm not going to hop in a pool tomorrow and go a lifetime best time. Nor do I want to. I don't have that desire right. anymore. I've got okay with that. So a lot of what I do is helping former athletes get okay with a new set of expectations and set a new framework, but still celebrating what their body can do. What I hold myself to is I want people to look at me and say, I believe that he swam at that level. I don't, wanna, I don't want anyone to ever look at me and be like, I don't buy that for a minute that he was <laughs> you know, competitive in a sport at, a, at the highest level that there was. And that's really kind of what I try to instill on in the people I work with is like, you can still move your body and still feel like an athlete. It just doesn't have to be the same. And that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think we get in, in our heads expectations of like, oh, it has to go like this, or it has to move this way. And I was competing at such a high level that when I move into what's next, I have to also be at this super high level or be the best at it. And to yeah. your earlier point, too, like, it takes time, like, all the time you're putting into the pool, all the time you're putting into whatever sport it is, like, 
you had to put that time in to get where you went. So I think your point about looking at it from a different perspective and saying it's not going to be the same, it's going to be different, but that's still good. And you can explore that. So I think that's a really great um, resource for people to tap into and really understand. So that's great. Yeah, um, it's, it's just enjoying it, right? Like, it's no longer our job to move our body. It's something we yeah. get to do on a daily basis. So why don't we celebrate that and have some fun in that movement? I mean, we totally didn't even touch on it, but I had a heart condition for about two years that was unknown. Mm -hmm. And that really put things in perspective to me. And that was right in the middle of my swimming career. Wow. of like mm -hmm. appreciating what my body was able to do because I, did, I couldn't take it for granted anymore. Like, Right. It could have right. been taken away at any given moment. So I decided to, instead of sulk about it, I decided to celebrate each time that I got to pop in the water for practice or show up on the blocks to compete in a race. It was just icing on the cake at that point. Yeah. that I mean, it's great to, to, to think about it in that perspective, too, is, you know, it's it's transitioning not only your expectations, but the mindset and the thoughts that you're having instead of, oh, I have to work out or, oh, I have to do something like, no, you get to go do this. Like, aren't you lucky that yeah. you're able to go grab a grab a run or, you know, jump in a pool, whatever that is, you know, like you, you have that opportunity and not everyone has that capability. Um, so I think that's great perspective. Um, as we wrap up here, I just wanted to ask a couple more questions of you. Is there, is, is there something that you've done that helped set you up for success when you were transitioning that you'd advise fellow former athletes or athletes thinking about the transition and thinking about what's next to do? Yeah, um, I think the most helpful thing, the thing I wish I had, like advice-wise, was that it's okay to, to pause for a second and just like, seriously sit with the question of what it is you want and what does success mean to you because those two things are going to be really what drives your fulfillment and your happiness on a day-to-day -day basis i think there's this pressure especially at the higher that you compete that you need to transition and not only do you need to transition but you need to do it really really fast and be really good at whatever it is that you do next because you were this great athlete it's okay to pause. In fact, you're going to be able, I say it all the time, slow down to speed up. Like you're going to be better off if you slow down in that moment in that transition period and take your foot off the gas and really sit with and reflect and then decide next steps rather than just going haphazardly through life and being like, this looks good. This looks good. I'm going to do this next. I'm going to do this. And you're totally lost. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great advice. Because I do think there's that pressure of like, Oh, now what are you going to do? So now what's next? Like, what's next for you? Everybody is always asking that. And it's great to have an idea of like, Oh, this is what I'm thinking about. But I love that advice of pausing because I think athlete or not, I don't think we pause enough to really sit and, and think about things. And I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of folks out there that if they had paused and really thought about some things, there may be some different yeses and no answers they would be giving right now to some of the things they're working on. So I think that's really great advice. Um, and another question I just had is, you also talk a lot about kind of giving athletes the tools and helping them change their mindset. So what, what can athletes do to make an impact on their own lives, on the lives of other people? Like what, what skill sets should they be embracing? How can they start to do that? Yeah, we kind of touched on it without actually addressing it earlier but the word choice that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, getting to move your body, having it be a celebratory thing, knowing that you have the power each and every day to make a choice in your life. That is like the most empowering tool. And if you are fully able to wrap your head around that and use it fully to its capabilities, confidence and everything else is just going to ooze out of you. You're going to be this magnet this magnetic energy and persona that people want to be around so being aware of your word choice knowing that it matters having the skills to catch yourself in the moments where you're choosing words that might not best serve who you want to be if you find yourself being like this freaking sucks why does this always happen to me i'll give an example because we're sitting outside of my new place like i learned very quickly the street right to my right here you can't park during certain hours. The reason I found out because I came out the second morning that I lived here and my car wasn't there. It was towed. No. And I was like, God, I just moved here. This, you know, this stinks. And I had in that moment, 
I had to take my own advice. I had to pause and instead of cursing, you know, a higher power and saying, why, why do you do this to me? It was like, okay, yes, it stinks. I still have to pay a fine. I still have to pay to get my car back, but I'm not going to let it have a lasting impact on the rest of my day, the rest of my week. And now a week later, it makes for a freaking awesome story to tell on these kind of things. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's transforming those inconveniences and those like, oh, this, it, this sucks moments into learning opportunities and saying, well, yeah. now I know for sure I can't park there and it won't happen again. And it's yeah. like taking the positive out of it. So I, I love that. And I do think you're right. Like the words we use and how we frame our own stories and our own experiences make an impact on us and also on others, how they see us and how they see our outlook on life. So I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and Corey, for people that want to take advantage of your group coaching, that want to find you, that want to learn more about your work, where can they find you? How can they get in touch? I was about to say, easiest is through Instagram here, just at Corey Camp. My website is CoreyCamp.com. The Athletic Mindset Podcast can be found on all platforms. Um, if you're listening to this and anything resonated with you, I invite you to just start a dialogue with me. I would be more than happy to hop on a phone just like this and figure out, you know, where you're at with things and if it actually makes sense to explore coaching options or just make some simple tweaks here and there and go on with your life. Uh, either way, you're going to leave improved. I love it. Well, Corey, thank you so much for taking a time out with us. I really appreciate you sharing your work. I think your advice was really, really important, especially with all the uncertainty going on now, really giving people those tools to control what they can control and, and kind of take that challenge of releasing expectations and reimagining things. So thank you everyone for tuning in. For those of you that watch later, again, everybody go follow Corey here on Instagram, check out the athletic mindset podcast and Corey, thanks again for being here and taking the time out with us. Danielle, thank you for having me. I appreciate your time as well. So hopefully snow stops and things warm up here for you soon. Yes, fingers crossed. And I hope you enjoy sunny LA and I uh, hope your car sticks around with you. <laughs> Me too on that one. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Talk yep. to you soon. Sounds good. Bye.